Next, Mr. Chameleon and the False Witness Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters, who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a particularly clever disguise, which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in the False Witness Murder Case. Our story opens in the home of Alden Allen, a very magnificent home in the East 70s. But the beauty of that home, the luxury and comfort, no longer give pleasure to Alan's young wife, Helen. And we find her now in the living room, her face ravaged with emotion, and she is saying to herself, When I was a child, I used to say, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Now I pray the Lord to show me the way out of this unbearable, this ghastly, horrible thing. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Mrs. Allen... Yes, Gertrude? Mr. Philip Wilkes is here to see you. Philip Wilkes? Oh, no. No, tell him I can't see him now, Gertrude. Give him any excuse, but please, please get rid of him. Helen, you can't mean this. You can't mean you won't see me. Philip! Gertrude, leave the room, please. Yes, madam. Philip, are you mad coming here today? Please, please leave at once. Alden, my husband, is home. He mustn't know you're here. Helen, did you ask him for a divorce last night? No. Well... Yes, and it was dreadful, horrible, the things he threatened to do to both of us. To think that I should have married such a man. Such a man is right. A man who's put you through every humiliation, every scandal. But I'm not afraid of him. Where is he, in his study? Philip, don't go in there. Helen, I'm going to have it out with your husband myself. It's better that way. Philip, I beg of you, don't go in there. I'm sorry. I'm going in. (gasps) Helen! Helen! What's the matter? Alden, there's something wrong. He's lying face downward on the floor. What? Oh, he must be ill. No. He's dead. Oh, no. Did you kill him, Helen? I? Did I kill him? I think you did. Philip! Philip, do you know what you're saying? I repeat, I think you killed him. Don't lie to me. I know you killed him. And you're the one who said you loved me. Who said you trusted me that you'd stand by me no matter what happened. But when I said those things, I didn't know I was saying them to a murderer. Oh, please, please, stop. I can't take any more. Helen! Helen, what's wrong? I heard your voices. Mother! Oh, Mother! Alden is dead. (gasps) Alden? Dead? And Philip thinks I murdered him. Philip, get out of this house. Mrs. Hayward. If anyone killed Alden, it was you, not my daughter. I know what's been going on. Leave this house, Philip, immediately. Gertrude. Oh, here you are, eavesdropping as usual. Show Mr. Wilkes to the door. Yes, Mrs. Hayward. And then I'm going to call the police and leave myself. I won't stay in a house with a woman who's killed her husband. And now, a little later, we find Mr. Chameleon examining the lifeless body of Alden Allen. While Helen and her mother sit side by side, their eyes never leaving the quick-moving figure of Chameleon. Your husband, Mrs. Allen, died of poison. Very fast and potent poison put into this glass of medicine. Why did he take this medicine? He had a slight heart condition, Mr. Chameleon. Very slight. He took one teaspoonful of medicine in a glass of water. Uh, Where did he keep the medicine? In a little cupboard in the pantry. Alden was a, a hypochondriac. He was always taking medicine. When did you last see your husband alive? Last night, Mr. Chameleon. Yet you didn't find his body until an hour ago. And it's nearly noon, Mrs. Allen. Alden went his separate way, Mr. Chameleon. 
Sometimes my daughter and I wouldn't see him for days at a time. I take it that you did not like your son-in-law, Mrs. Hayward, yet you lived under his roof. I paid my way, and my daughter needed me here. She needed me very much. Let go of me. I didn't do anything. And come along quietly. Oh, what's that? It's Gertrude, Mother. And Detective Sergeant Arnold. Dave, what's up? I caught her trying to sneak out of the house, Mr. Chameleon. She says her name is Gertrude Matthews and that she works here as a maid for the Allens. Did work for them, you mean? You don't think I'd go on working for a murderess? Gertrude, be quiet. No, I won't. You're a nice woman, Mrs. Hayward, and you love your daughter just like I did mine. But Mrs. Allen is a murderess. Well, then, uh, she must have had a reason for murdering her husband. What was that reason, in your opinion, Gertrude? He wouldn't give her a divorce. She wanted to marry Philip Wilkes, and Mr. Allen wouldn't let her go. How did you know that? Well, I, uh... How'd you know it, Gertrude? I heard him quarreling last night, Mr. Chameleon. It was a terrible fight. He said he'd never set her free. He said she'd have to go on living under the same roof with him and put up with his ways for the rest of her life. That true, Mrs. Allen? Did you quarrel with your husband? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. You wanted to marry this Philip Wilkes? Yes, and Mr. Wilkes. He called her a murderess, too, this morning. I heard them when they found the body. He said he knew she'd done it. Is this also true, Mrs. Allen? Yes, it is. Who gave your husband the medicine last night? What? Who gave your husband the fatal dose of medicine that killed him? What? She did, Mr. Chameleon. She gave it to him. I saw her hand him the glass after they'd been quarreling. But, Gertrude, have you forgotten? You're the one who mixed it. You mixed the medicine and the water, and then you gave it to me. I, I simply carried it into my husband. And you poisoned it on the way, you scheming murderer. Uh, Gertrude, why do you hate Mrs. Allen so much? And since you do hate her, why have you kept on working here? Hmm, because, because good jobs are hard to get. And I don't hate her, Mr. Chameleon. It's just that she's a murderer. And I forbid you to use that word again. But, Mrs. Hayward, you know... Oh. This has all been a great shock to me. I, I'm not young anymore, and I'm afraid. I, I, I'm afraid I, I can't take it. Mother. <gasps> I've got it. Let me put her on the couch. Mother! She's only fainted, Mrs. Allen. Your mother will be all right. How are you feeling, Mrs. Hayward? Oh, Mr. Chameleon, are you here? Where are the others? I asked them to leave us alone. So you could question me and then compare my answers with the answers of the others. That was clever of you. But then you're noted for your cleverness. This is the first time I've ever met a detective. Mrs. Hayward, tell me about Philip Wilkes. Philip Wilkes... He's been telling my daughter for months that he loved her. In fact... Did he have a chance to poison your son-in-law? Yes, he did. Well, perhaps I shouldn't say this, Mr. Chameleon, but he did have a chance to poison Alden. How? Well, last night he came to see Helen. She wasn't home, and he waited for her. He saw Alden's bottle of medicine in the study, and he, he asked a great many questions about it, Mr. Chameleon. I was called to the telephone... And when I returned, Philip was gone. He did not wait to see your daughter? No, uh, no, he didn't. By the way, Mrs. Hayward, um, who was your son-in-law's doctor? His doctor? Yes. His name is uh, Ridley, Herbert Ridley, but as a matter of fact, he's, uh, he's out of town on a holiday just now. I see. Now, uh, tell me something about your son-in-law, Mrs. Hayward. Mrs. Hayward... Oh, he was a dreadful man, Mr. Chameleon, really horrible. For years he flaunted his other women in Helen's face. Oh, my poor Helen. Five years of torment. And now, murder. Mrs. Hayward, Gertrude Matthews, the maid, said that you loved your daughter just as she loved hers. What do you mean by that? Oh, so you notice that remark. You notice everything, don't you, Mr. Chameleon? Well, come over here to the table... I'll show you what she meant. You see this album? Oh, yes, that's a uh, photograph album. Yes. Magnificent, isn't it? The finest leather, hand-tooled. Alden kept this in full view. 
one of his most sadistic trips, tricks. Open it. Mm. Who are these women? Lovely, aren't they? Page after page of them. They were all friends of Alden's. And this one here, what do you think of her? Beautiful. It's a real beauty. Well, she's a famous artist model. Many is the time I've seen that face. She was an artist model. She no longer is because What are she... you doing with that album? <laughs> what are you doing with that picture? Give it to me. Give me that picture, Mr. Chameleon. Whose picture is it, uh, Gertrude? Your daughter? Yes. Lila's. She's dead, isn't she? She killed herself. And she'd be alive today if it wasn't for Mrs. Allen. Oh, Gertrude, that's not true. Yes, it is, Mrs. Haywood. Halton Allen was going to marry my Lila. Instead, he married your daughter. And I hope your daughter's arrested for murder. And now, a little later, we find Mr. Chameleon and Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold approaching the apartment of Philip Wilkes. And Mr. Chameleon is saying... What a house full of hatred that was, Dave. And what a terrible man Alden Alden must have been. That maid, Gertrude Matthews, had plenty of reason for killing Alden Allen. Or for framing Mrs. Allen. She certainly did. She revealed a great deal about herself when she saw that picture. Well, here we are. Philip Wilkes' apartment. Very anxious to meet this young man. There's one question in particular I hope you can answer. Yes? Mr. Wilkes, my name is Chameleon from Central Police Headquarters. This is Detective Sergeant Arnold. Oh, come in. I've been expecting you. Yeah? I, I called Helen. She said you were on the case. I would have stayed there. I discovered the body, you know, but her mother ordered me out of the house. Yes, I understand you accused Helen, uh, that is, uh, Mrs. Allen, of murder. Helen? I couldn't have. I love her, Mr. Chameleon. Don't lie, Mr. Wilkes. Gertrude, the maid, swore to me that you accused Mrs. Allen of being a murderer. Well, perhaps I did. To tell you the truth, I was so upset at the time, I don't know what I said. I realize now that Helen couldn't have done it. Well, then who did? You? Me. Mrs. Haywood, Helen's mother, claims that last night you were left alone with Mr. Allen's bottle of medicine. You had plenty of time to poison that medicine, Mr. Wilkes. But that's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, you could very well have accused Helen Allen for that reason. You were afraid for yourself. And you put the blame on her, knowing she wouldn't be convicted of a murder she did not commit. No, no, that, that's insane. Of course I didn't do but it. But you claim that Mrs. Allen couldn't have done it. Mr. Chameleon. Yes? I, I did love Helen, but she was under terrible pressure. She was nearly out of her mind. Alden told her if she ever tried to divorce him, he'd trump up evidence against her character. He, he'd make it so bad for her that she'd never be able to face decent people again. Must have been frightful for her. Unbearable, Mr. Chameleon. She often said that that her husband's death would be the only way out. I see. One more thing, Mr. Wilkes, about the doctor. What doctor? Mr. Allen's doctor. What was his name? Why, Fillmore. Robert Fillmore. Not Dr. Ridley? Why, no. I heard Helen say only last week that he'd changed from Dr. Ridley to Dr. Fillmore. Very well. That's all for now, Mr. Wilkes. Come along, Dave. Goodbye. Goodbye. But, Mr. Chameleon, I, I mean, have you finished? I have indeed, Dave. I asked all the questions I intended to ask, and I got some extremely interesting answers, too. Mr. Chameleon and the false witness murder case continues in just a moment. A very important thing to know about genuine Bayer aspirin is that its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system, mothers give it even to small children on their doctor's advice. Always remember this because it means that when you have an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, you can take Bayer aspirin with complete confidence. For Bayer aspirin gives you more than fast relief, it also gives you the dependable relief that's important to your health. Bayer aspirin speed is proved by the fact that it's actually ready to go to work in two seconds, and its dependability is proved by its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect, a record that no other pain reliever can match. So don't experiment when you're in pain. Don't risk using drugs that have not stood the test of time. Instead, use something that millions know from experience is fast and completely dependable, too. Genuine Bayer aspirin. 
When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100 tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the false witness murder case. Alden Allen has been poisoned, and his wife, Helen, had good reason to kill him, as Chameleon knows. And now in the office of the Commissioner of Police, Chameleon is saying to the Commissioner, Allen's record is fantastic, Commissioner, fantastic. There is no excuse for murder ever, but that man spread unhappiness around him like a plague. What about the poison, Chameleon? Have you been able to trace it? No. That is one of the strangest angles of the case. Mm. Analysis showed that that entire bottle of medicine had been poisoned. So even if Alden Allen had mixed the dose himself, he'd have died. Well, that's what the killer wanted to be sure of. Exactly. Philip Wilkes was alone with that bottle, yet there is no record of his having purchased poison in the city. There is no record of Helen Allen having purchased it either. And the doctor. What doctor? Someone lied about Allen's doctor. Mrs. Haywood, Helen's mother, tells me Allen's doctor was named Ridley. Philip Wilkes, on the other hand, says he went to Dr. Fillmore. You know, Commissioner, the well-known specialist. Yes, though that's easily checked on, Chameleon. Yes. But whichever one lied, why did they lie? I have a theory. I'm going to see Dr. Fillmore, and if my theory is right, that is one piece of evidence I have got to get. Mrs. Hayward may love her daughter, but Gertrude Matthews, the maid, loved hers too. And I am going to take advantage of that mother love. What do you mean? I want to get into that house unknown to Helen Allen or anyone else, Commissioner. I'm going to call there disguised as Peter Tomes, an artist for whom Gertrude's dead daughter once posed. I hope that will be an open sesame to the Allen house and whatever secret that house may hold. And so we find Mr. Chameleon in his disguise of Peter Tomes walking along the street with Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold beside him. And he's fingering the little black beard, which is part of his disguise, and saying, How about it, Dave? You think it'll get by him? Yeah, sure. You know, it's funny that beard gives your face a different shape. Yes. A lot is in the eye of the beholder. That maid, uh, Gertrude, is pretty sharp, but what I have to say to her may blind her, too. That often happens. And what about Dr. Fillmore? I'm going back there later. Though uh, what he told me practically clinches it. Now if I can only have free access to the house... Oh, stop here, Dave. This is close enough. And wait for me here. Wait, do you understand? And hope that I will manage to get past Gertrude. And so Mr. Chameleon approaches the Allen house. He rings the doorbell, and as he hoped, Gertrude answers the door. And he says to her in the voice of Peter Tomes, Are you Mrs. Gertrude Matthews? Yes, I am. I'm glad I found you here. I've been reading the papers. I was afraid you left the place. I mean, after all, a murder. You think I wouldn't leave if I possibly could? But no, the police say I got to stick around. I can't leave till this is all cleared up. So I figured I might as well stay on here till the police get around to arresting Mrs. Allen. Frankly, Mrs. Matthews, I'm not interested in this murder. I only read about this one because you were mixed up in it. And what have I got to do with you? I've never even seen you before. No, Mrs. Matthews, but uh, I was a friend of your daughter's. My daughter? Lila? Yeah. I'm an artist. My name is Peter Tomes. Sure, she mentioned me. She posed for me often. Peter Tomes? No. Oh, yeah, I guess she did. I. She was a beautiful girl. The most beautiful I have ever seen. Step inside, Mr. Tomes. It's cold out here. Well, I... Mrs. Uh... Allen and her mother are upstairs, getting ready for the funeral of the husband Mrs. Allen killed. But never mind that. Come in. So my daughter posed for you, huh? Yeah. One of the finest models I ever had. In fact, I miss her desperately. Just starting an illustration, I would wanted Lila for the central figure. She killed herself? Yeah, I know. Don't even like to think about that. 
I was wondering, uh, you have a photograph of Lila? Good one? Why? Well, I, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't even have to take it with me. I could sit in the kitchen here and make a sketch of it. It's all I need, a sketch to work from. Now, your daughter Lila would be immortalized, Mrs. Matthews. I'll tell you, I, I don't have a very good photograph, but Mr. Allen had one. The finest photographer in the country made it. Hey, would you let me copy that? I beg of you, please, let me copy it. Okay, but it's in his album, and that detective, Mr. Chameleon, is interested in it. You couldn't take it out of the house, but how long would it take you? Oh, a couple of hours to make the sketch. Then you wait here in the kitchen. They'll be leaving for the funeral in about half an hour. You just sit nice and quiet, and they won't know you're here. I'm going, too. And after we leave, you'll have the place to yourself. Dave. Dave. Mr. Chameleon, did it work? Did you manage to get into the Allen house? It worked. I was able to go through the house and I got exactly what I wanted. Well, did it tie in with what Dr. Fillmore told you? Mm-hmm. Dave, call Philip Wilkes. Tell him to be at the Allen home at 9 o'clock tonight. I am ready for a showdown with Alden Allen's murderer. Chameleon, why did you bring me here? I mean... You mean you're a little embarrassed at entering this home, Mr. Wilkes, after having accused Helen Allen of murdering her husband. Isn't that right? Mr. Chameleon, did he tell you, too, that I poisoned Alden? He said you had a reason for it, Mrs. Allen. He overlooked the fact that quite a few people had a motive for killing your husband. Well, who did, Mr. Chameleon? Don't rush me, Gertrude. I'm coming to it. You mean you know? Yes, Mrs. Hayward. But have you actually got proof? I have, Mr. Wilkes. You see, first of all, I went to see Dr. Fillmore. And Dr. Fillmore was your husband's physician, wasn't he, Mrs. Allen? Yes. Alden changed from Dr. Ridley to Dr. Fillmore. Yes, so I discovered. Well, Dr. Fillmore and myself had a very interesting discussion about incurable diseases. Incurable diseases? That's right, Mr. Wilkes. If you know that you're going to be dead in the near future, naturally it affects your behavior, wouldn't you say? Why, Mr. yes, Mr. Chameleon! But... Are you trying to say that Alden, that my husband had an incurable disease, that he killed himself and tried to make it look like murder? No, I don't mean that, though uh, I wouldn't have put it past him. No, Mrs. Allen, it wasn't your husband. It's the murderer who has an incurable disease. What? Are you sure of your facts, Mr. Chameleon? Positive, Mrs. Hayward. I also have the evidence to back it up. I found the supply of poison that was put in Alden Allen's medicine. You got the poison? Yes, Gertrude. The murderer had it in their possession for some time. That is why there was no recent record of its purchase. But how did you find it, Mr. Chameleon? Where did you find it? In this house, Mrs. Hayward. But you never searched the house? I did this afternoon while you were all at the funeral. This afternoon? But the house was locked. Right, Mrs. Allen. But I was on the inside when you locked it. I was waiting in the kitchen, wasn't I, Gertrude? What? You you mean you were Peter Tomes, that artist fellow, Mr. Chameleon? You mean you got into this house in disguise? Yes, Mrs. Hayward. I'm afraid I deliberately played on Gertrude's mother, Love. I told her that I wanted to paint a portrait from her daughter, Lila's photograph. But, Mr. Chameleon, I never guessed who you were. The poison. Where is the poison? Yes, where is it, Mr. Chameleon? Right here in this box, Mrs. Allen. Mrs. Hayward, where are you going? Why, uh, uh, just upstairs. No use, Mrs. Hayward. You'd only find the poison gone. This really is the poison I have in this box. I found it hidden in a hollow post in your four-poster bed. Mother, Mrs. Hayward! I wondered why you lied about the doctor, Mrs. Hayward. Why you tried to keep me away from Dr. Fillmore. You lied because Fillmore was your doctor, too. You were afraid I'd ask him about you, which I did. This afternoon, when I was here alone in disguise, I went straight to your room, Mrs. Hayward. I thought I'd find the poison there, and I did. Mother! Oh, Mother! Well, Mrs. Hayward, <laughs> must I prolong this? Hasn't your daughter been through enough? Yes. That's why I murdered Alden. Because Helen had been through so much. 
I couldn't stand her unhappiness. Oh, Mother. There's never any excuse for murder. Didn't it occur to you that she might be accused? Yes. But I thought I couldn't bear to face a murder charge. If I didn't die before, I intended to kill myself. Now I know it's better to take my medicine. I plead guilty to Alden's murder, Mr. Chameleon. But I'll tell you something. I know of that motto of yours. The innocent must be protected, the guilty must be punished? Yes. I protected the innocent, Mr. Chameleon. I left a full confession in my safe deposit vault to be read in case I died. But good heavens, you let me think that Helen was the murderer. How could you do that, Mrs. Hayward? How could you think it, Philip? I understood you very well, your weakness and your cowardice. I knew that if suspicion pointed to you, you'd behave badly. And Helen would see you as you really are. But that's terrible. Helen, darling, forgive me. You will forgive me. No, I'll never forgive you, Philip. But I said I'd never forgive you. Now get out, please. Get out and leave me with my mother. Very well. I certainly wouldn't want a murderer for a mother-in-law. You're very well rid of him, Mrs. Allen. Philip didn't love you. I know. The law does not require a husband and wife to testify against each other because love might make them lie. Now, that's part of loving. Absolute loyalty to each other. One might suspect the other of murder, but certainly doesn't immediately run to betray them. No, no. In a way, your mother freed you from a man who was almost as bad as old Nellen. Oh, Mr. Chameleon. (laughs) Mrs. Hayward, it is my sad duty to take you to police headquarters. I am ready to go. And so, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Whenever you feel like you're catching cold, remember the way that thousands use to quickly relieve painful cold symptoms. That way is to take two Bayer aspirin tablets with a full glass of water. Because Bayer Aspirin is ready to go to work almost instantly, your discomfort is quickly relieved. And to ease the pain of a sore throat due to a cold, just do this. Dissolve three Bayer Aspirin tablets in one-third of a glass of water and gargle. Used this way, Bayer Aspirin makes a highly potent medicinal gargle that quickly soothes soreness and brings welcome relief to the irritated membranes of your throat. When you buy... Be sure to ask for genuine Bayer Aspirin by its full name, never by the name Aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of the Elevator with Two Bodies. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson with dialogue by Marie Balmer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. After years of work, a revolutionary new toothpaste has been developed called Lion's Toothpaste. By actual laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth, It gets teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands. Brighter by far than any other toothpaste. New Lion's toothpaste does this because it's a new kind of toothpaste with a formula that's completely new and radically different. A remarkable toothpaste that cleans without soap and polishes without chalk. Try it. Ask for Lion's toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Case of the Elevator with Two Bodies next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.